A woman just broke the record for the largest breast milk donation. A woman was arrested for tearing off part of her partner's genitals during an argument. And a woman divorced her handsome ghost of a Victorian soldier. These are the weird stories for Wednesday on Weird AF News. Tough to stay, tough to say with a straight face. <laughs> I got three weird news stories from around the world. This is what we do on Weird AF News, which is the only daily weird news podcast in the galaxy, recorded by a comedian inside a closet. Let's get to it. A woman has broken the world record for the largest breast milk donation a mother from aloha oregon they have an aloha oregon how confusing that might be you think you're in hawaii but you're in oregon this woman from aloha is being hailed as a superhero she's a superhero because she's helped hundreds of families around the world with her breast milk she recently broke the guinness world record for the largest breast milk donation as a matter of fact her name is Elizabeth Anderson Sierra. She says that she's never expected to break any record. She said, quote, It used to be kind of a joke, but then I went through with it, and here it is. I broke a record. She's very proud of her powerful breasts. Elizabeth has a very rare medical condition, though. She has hyperlactation syndrome. She explains this syndrome causes her body to produce a surplus of milk producing breast milk for nine years and averaging about 200 ounces a day. That's a lot of breast milk. I've never heard of hyperlactation syndrome. It's, um, it's helpful to learn about such things. And Weird AF News will bring these sorts of rare conditions to life here. Uh, you learn a lot about what people are dealing with. Here's a quote from Elizabeth. Well, it all started in 2014. I wasn't sure what was going on at first, and my medical team did a lot of testing to identify and diagnose, and then it was a large learning process from there, just learning how to handle and manage my condition. My body does whatever it takes to make this amount of breast milk, and I have to tell you, it's very taxing. And any pumping or nursing problems that any mom can experience, my body also experiences those, but it's elevated, it's heightened. It could be a medical emergency much quicker says at first Elizabeth's condition was challenging to manage. Well, of course, it took up a lot of my time. You know, I was just constantly lactating and making milk. And you know, I was using a, a big bulky pump that had to plug into the wall. Says here after Elizabeth discovered the baby Buddha pump. Ooh, the baby Buddha pump. This is a smaller pump that allows her to pump on the go. Uh, she was then empowered to live her life just pumping away on the go. I'd imagine she was doing this everywhere, uh, perhaps even at a full-time job. Sounds like a lot of annoyances and probably some suffering going on, just constantly lactating. Uh, here's a further quote from Elizabeth. Now I can go to the park, I can go to the zoo, I can do anything. I was actually comparing the beginning of my journey earlier to now, and I look back and I'm so sad for her, but I'm excited for me now. And being able to take back my life, take back my freedom. And there, now there's no limitations. Well, that's nice because it's got to be a, a tough life. I mean, I can't imagine having a condition like perpetual ejaculation syndrome or something where you know, I'm just constantly, you know, oozing. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> that was a little graphic. But this would be terrible, I would ima I'd imagine. Elizabeth explained that... that Guinness World Records previously reached out to her after they heard of her donations. However, she said she wasn't ready to attempt this lactation record, didn't want to be in the spotlight for it. But during the formula stage, uh, I'm sorry, the formula shortage, Elizabeth said she wanted to make a difference and decided to take on this world record to normalize milk sharing. And she ended up breaking the record with nearly 1,600 liters of donated milk. She says, I'm hoping that by sharing my story, by breaking this world lactation record, it kind of encourages other people to look into donor milk. And if you have a surplus, you too can share it like I did. You know, this is very touching and, and encouraging. You know, what I love about this story is learning about this weird condition and this situation that this woman's in. But then she made applesauce out of apples. Is that what they say? She made lemonade out of lemons. She made milk out of her breasts. She broke a record and was able to help mothers all around the world at the same time. Very, very cool. 
Hey, smoke a fatty and laugh it up with Weird AF News. Yay! A woman was arrested for tearing off part of her partner's genitals during an argument. Get your free circumcision. Step right up. Get your free circumcision. All you got to do is argue with this Karen. Uh, This couple were allegedly drunk and they were arguing before they both became physically and verbally violent with one another and it led to a 36-year-old woman being arrested. They're not naming her. This took place in the south of France. The place is called Portet sur Garonne. Garonne? Garonne. It's south of Toulouse. Toulouse. I don't think I'm saying any of this properly. Uh, She was arrested two days after the alleged attack. Her partner's a 45-year-old man, had to be rushed to the Rangul Hospital. (laughs) Rangul. I can never seem to get these French words under control here. He had to be taken to the hospital after, quote, the skin of his penis had been partly torn off, according to the doctors. Well, now, how did this happen? Well, during the altercation, the police report says the woman allegedly grabbed the man's genitals and, quote, pulled very hard. She then attacked his ear. It's very strange. She pulled at the genitals and then attacked his ear. This is very Well, she's going for the places that really hurt, I think. You know, he probably put his hands down by the genitals. That left his ears exposed, and she ripped it at the ear. She was trying to pull a little Vincent Van Gogh on him after doing the, the bobbit move. You guys know these uh, references I'm pulling out here on Weird AF News? This is what you get, guys. It says here it remains unknown whether the woman used a weapon of some kind to carry out this assault, but the man lost, quote, a large part of the skin of the penis and the foreskin. Well, you don't need a weapon to do that. A nice, quote, very hard pull will do the duty. When the emergency services arrived, the man was conscious but seemed, quote, in terrible pain, obviously. The victim was reportedly examined by a medical examiner to estimate the seriousness of his injury. Uh, and that's the end of the article. You learn a lot from these sorts of stories, though. You know, like you, you know, you don't have an argument while naked. That's one. You know, you have to put on some underwear. When she says, honey, we need to talk, immediately put on some underwear, maybe a cup and perhaps, I don't know, a catcher's mask. Do you want to create a podcast? Spotify's platform lets you easily make, record, and distribute a podcast and even earn money all in one place for free. It's called Spotify for Podcasters. Record and edit on your phone or your computer. Send it to Spotify and everywhere podcasts are heard. They even have video podcasting options as well. Spotify for Podcasters allows you to earn money with ads and subscriptions too. Best of all, it's free. Try it. Download Spotify for Podcasters or go to spotify.com slash podcasters to get started. And good luck with your podcast. Good luck with your life, man. After less than a year of marriage, a singer has divorced her handsome ghost of a Victorian soldier. Welcome to journalism 2023, guys. (laughs) This is more of a palate cleanser story, I would say. A singer who married what she claims was a ghost of a Victorian soldier, has said they are divorcing less than a year later. This songwriter and performer, who goes only by the name Brocarde, said that she first met her devilishly handsome Eduardo when he burst into her bedroom one dark and stormy night. The 40-year-old from Oxfordshire said long-haired Eduardo immediately announced his love for her and later began confiding in her. Their spirited love affair hit the headlines when the singer Bracarde announced they were marrying in a chapel on Halloween in 2022. I can't remember if I even covered this story back in 2022. I have covered numerous stories of women marrying ghosts and even a woman who married a 747 plane and a woman who married a bridge, a woman who married a zombie doll, and a woman who married herself. People are lonely out there. (laughs) The singer posted a video of her wedding ceremony on Instagram where she was seen wearing all black with an empty space where invisible Eduardo was said to have been standing, according to her. I mean, you really got to give it up to her friends and family for going through with this charade and sort of legitimizing her fantasy on some level. I don't know if I could uh, be such a good friend if someone 
invited me to their wedding and I found out they were marrying the ghost of a Victorian soldier. I, I don't know if I could go through with it. Those are some good friends right there. Unfortunately, shortly after they married, Bricarde said she was angry that her husband got too drunk on their honeymoon. <laughs> He got drunk on the honeymoon in Barry Island, Wales. <laughs> what, what was he drinking, huh? What's that? <laughs> so, <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I was try trying to think of a popular Victorian alcoholic beverage. Absinthe, perhaps? This <laughs> the ghost just couldn't lay off the absinthe. The singer added that Eduardo would often become increasingly possessive and would switch between being warm and intense and then threatening. She says, quote, After our initial meeting, Eduardo slowly revealed more about himself to me. I saw his images as a Victorian soldier. He was always in his uniform, even on our wedding day. His face is devilishly handsome. Shoulder length, unruly hair. He looks lived in, well-worn, troubled almost. There's a pain attached to his being. Yeah, pain, you think? He's dead. That, of course he's in pain. He's dead. Hi, okay, okay, okay. Pills, baby, pills. There's pills for this, I think. Says here, the singer, songwriter, poet, and performer also says that she was sick and tired of Eduardo's unsettling fascination with Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> he wasn't even alive when Marilyn Monroe was around. He got a little obsessed with her later on. Perhaps he tried to marry her and she turned him down. You know, it's just, I mean, it's hard when you have to break up with a ghost. It really is. <laughs> the, Bricarde claims the soldier's crush on the late iconic Hollywood actress began on their wedding day when he spotted the spirit of Marilyn Monroe in the chapel. Oh, Marilyn Monroe was at your wedding. Okay. <laughs> Oh, man, I think I saw her at my softball game last week, too, so she's getting around these days. Now, this jilted lover claims that the soldier ghost would disappear for days. Yeah, that's right. That's what they do. They disappear for days before returning. And when he returned, according to her, he smelled of Chanel Number no. 5, the fragrant, fragrance which had been Monroe's favorite perfume. <laughs> he smelled like Marilyn Monroe. Wow, the levels of psychopathy. I feel horrible. This is terrible, man. The singer claims setting boundaries with the ghost really infuriated Eduardo. He allegedly started to haunt her with the sound of a screaming baby. Oh, that's, you know, I hate when that happens. Bricarde says she returned to the chapel where they married in order to exorcise him from her mind. Wow, isn't that ironic how she's ghosting a ghost, you know? <laughs> Well, his, obviously his spirit wasn't into it, and he's a bit of a deadbeat. Um, I'd imagine uh, breaking up with your ghost husband is like really getting a load off your chest. Because I'd imagine everywhere you go, you just have to get tired explaining how you've uh, married a ghost and all the, and the fallout of that. You know? so, <laughs> she can get back to normalcy now. So I guess uh, for any of you fellas that are living in, over in Oxfordshire, we've got a new, there's a new woman on the market here. So... <laughs> And I'd imagine it's it's probably pretty easy to be better than a devilishly handsome Victorian ghost who's obsessed with absinthe and Marilyn Monroe. So go get her. Yay! Thank you, my loyal listeners, for persevering through yet another episode of Weird AF News. This one was extraordinarily bent, I would say, but we like to do that once in a while. I want to let everybody know that this is the only daily weird news podcast in existence, so please subscribe if this is something that you would like in your daily weird new in your daily news lineup. On Friday, we only do weird news from Florida. Just FYI, the podcast is available on all of your podcast players and even YouTube. Uh, I got some YouTube comments on the most recent Florida article, uh, Florida episode, Florida Friday, and it uh, sounds like they're from Floridians who were pretty upset with one of the stories. Uh, Someone named George wrote, check your comments on Florida slavery teachings. You should read the curriculum before you comment, trying to stop you from looking foolish. Someone else wrote, uh, someone named AIM wrote, uh, that's not what they're going to teach. Yet again, just like don't say gay bill, a misrepresentation of what it actually is. So some Florida citizens upset that I did the story about uh, Florida schools teaching slavery was awesome for slaves. Well, you know, I didn't honestly. I didn't have time to dive deep into the curriculum in Florida. I don't. I don't know if I want to dive into the 
Florida curriculum. I feel like it'll make me dumber. I barely got out of the Massachusetts curriculum with an okay brain. So uh, <laughs> I, 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 I dare to imagine that these uh, people in Florida are going to are going to even defend Ron DeSantis? I mean, would, would do Floridians often do that? How do you defend this guy? Anyways, it's a jungle over there, so I hope you guys can manage, manage your way out of Florida. Um, I came across an article that listed the top 10 most horrible states to live in in the United States, and Florida was in that top 10, as you can imagine. Um, anyways, I... I don't know why I'm going off about Florida. Oh, yeah, the comments, the comments. Anyways, I'm, I'm going to publish some phone calls after this, by the way, if you want to stick around for those. I got some really weird listeners that like to call in and say fun things, and I love, I love that. You can call the show 646-450-2012. You can email me as well, funnyjones at gmail.com. You can also slide into my DMs on Instagram at funnyjones as well. If you would like to support the show, you can buy me a coffee or join the Patreon and you can do those things at weirdafnews.com or you can download the Patreon app on your phone and do a search for Weird AF News. That's a great way to show your support as well. Or write me a nice review. I'd appreciate that. Or do nothing. Do nothing. Just listen to the show as you do five days a week um, and twice on Saturday. Anyways, I appreciate you guys and guess what? Guess what? Guess what, guys? Good luck with your life, man. Hey, Jonesy, and uh, all you weirdos, man, you guys got to check out the older episodes. Like, if you're just having your smart speaker play the most recent episode, you got to get on your podcast player and go back to all the old episodes. There are some really hilarious ones there. Like, there's one from 2018, Stunt Rapper Dies While Trying to Perform on the Wing of a Plane. I mean, are you out of your mind? Well, there's all kinds of crazy stuff in there, man. You gotta just, just put it on. Get some pizza. Smoke a fatty. You know, you know the drill. You know what to do. Hey, Jonesy, this is Becca from New Braunfels, Texas. I'm listening to your article about, uh, the Houston woman who went to Dubai and got herself arrested for talking too loudly, yelling, screaming, whatever she may have been doing, existing. In Dubai, as a Texas woman. Anyhow, I'm not sure why women from Houston would specifically want to go to Dubai. We'd have to have Houston women weigh in on that. But I can tell you this, as a Texas native, Houston is kind of the uh, Florida of Texas. So there is just no accounting for what happens in Houston. So maybe that's why Houston women are going to Dubai, because they got no sense. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Hey, Jonesy. So, um, yeah, in Ohio and I'm sure quite other places in the state, in the states, um, the government will pay um, your family members to be a home health care giver to you know, to the adulting or childing, I guess, whatever it's called, being a full-time child. Um, You know, it works out for everyone. It keeps the elderly parents or the disabled parents out of nursing homes where you just get treated terribly or having a home health aid. Um, They rip you off blindly and, and there is elder abuse and Unfortunately, I have experienced it because I'm your oldest listener. And anyway, I think it's a great thing. And I wish it would happen um, on, a, on a larger scale. And, uh, you know, the the chicks going from Houston to Dubai, the only thing I can think is that they're looking for a sultan so that can be one of many wives. and you know, have diamonds and look pretty and la, la, la. But just make sure you don't yell. Don't yell. Or you get your throat slit. Something. Um, and, you know, these people <laughs> with the pickleball, <laughs> um, why don't they learn to play the piano, for God's sake? Just think of it as a metronome. And, and, and 
learn the cello, learn piano, make something positive of it. Good luck with their lives, man. Oh, I got a pair of roller skates. You got a brand new key. Oh, Jonesy, you tried to stump Jim from Cleveland, but you can't stump Jim. One day I would love to get together with you, Jonesy, and just pick your brain and see how much music you try to come up with. Anyways, instead of five star whatever you said, I think it should be five star general, not a soldier, whatever you have. Say a five-star general when you get your reviews. Hopefully, you're doing good. I love that you're pimping out your shows. And uh, I think it's a good thing, man. One day, you might come to Cleveland one day. Who knows where you'll end up and do a comedy show there. Uh, hopefully, you're doing good. You stay safe, my buddy. Thinking of you. Thinking of football season. Jonesy, I hate to tell you, I don't think your New England Patriots are going to do good this year. I think they're going to end up in last place. Buffalo and Miami are way better, I think, uh, more talented. We'll see what my Browns do. I, I don't think we play you, which is good. We don't play you because for some reason we can't beat New England. Belichick's on the high, uh, he's on the hot seat. Never know. I think he'll, Maybe get fired. You never know. Hopefully you're doing good, man. Be safe. Love you. Talk to you later. Your friend from Cleveland, Ohio. It's not as warm as you are, but we still have it a little warm. Take care. Love you, man.